Exercise 6. In this exercise, we're going to look at the functionality for creating a two-dimensional drawing derived from a 3D model in Inventor 2017. So you can see here, here's a preview of what we're going to work on. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And we'll start off, first of all, grabbing the part. Now the part, you could get off of the, uh, go online, and if you go to vertanu1.com, you'll find the part files, and in the green column, you'll find the exercise six part. Just go ahead and click on that, and then hit download. Now all you have to do is you just go ahead and you start a drawing from here, or you could go to new drawing. Either way, what uh, either one is fine. Now usually what it does is it finds the model that you're working on and it, it, has, it goes ahead and brings that model up if you had it up. If you don't have it up and you just have it stored on your drive, you could go to base and pick the actual model. So if I go here, I could actually find the E6 and open that up. And you can see it gives me the model right there. Now I'm going to hit OK. What I realized is that the, the default template that I opened up here is actually a bit large. It's a D size, as we can see in the lower right corner. Perhaps we want to change that. Here's what we could do. On the left-hand side in the browser, if you hit the little arrow to the left of the drawing resources, you could go to sheet formats, hit that little arrow there, and a bunch of sheet formats will drop down. Through the selection, you pick out which one you want. So in this case, we'll go with the A size landscape and just double click on it. Now here again, it will actually prompt you for which part you'd like to have brought up on that drawing. So it will remember usually which, which ones are up on the list, or you could go ahead and go to browse again and just select the actual model you're interested in bringing up. Hit OK. Now here we can see it brings it in and it calculates essentially how usually it's going to fit well. In other words, in this case, it could fit a front, top, and right view pretty well on an A-size sheet, and it scaled it to that size. Uh, however, if you wanted to make a little bit more room, all of this can be adjusted. For example, the title block is rather large. If we want to, if you go to the left-hand side in the browser, find the sheet 2, that's our new sheet. The sheet 1 is the old one that we had. We could delete that if we want, or just hold on to it. In this case, I'm going to go to sheet 2, and if we hit the little... Uh, arrows to the left here you can see that the E6 part is listed and you have the default border and we have an ANSI large and this is actually the title block. You simply right click on it and delete. You'll see the title block will disappear. But now you could go to the title blocks folder and pick out the ANSI A and just double click. Now that we have the model in here and we have the proper title block what we can do is we could actually edit this view if you want to maybe make it smaller or change the shading or whatever. All you do is just double click on it. The drawing view properties should open up. If you wanted to rotate it and get a different view, you just simply click on this box. Or if you go home, it will give you a nice symmetric view. But over here on the left, we're going to go ahead and make some changes. For example, I want hidden lines removed. The scale I'll actually go with the 2 to 3 scale because that seems to fit a little bit nicer on here and it's not too small at the same time. You have the ability to shade it if you want, but I wouldn't recommend that in this case. We will do that with the isometric view shortly. But if you go to display options, another nice option, tangent edges and foreshortened, enables it, gives it a little cleaner look, a little easier to look at. And there we go. And there's our view. Now to unfold or what they call project additional views, you could just simply go to project it up at the top here and you'll see it will automatically drag off the top when you get the view you like click and then over here move to the right click again and that means left mouse button click and the isometric view you could get up here and click now before you hit enter you have to right click and create and then it will generate them if you hit escape that's prematurely it will actually all disappear and you'll have to go through it again. Okay, now let's take a look. Uh, for example, if we want to change this to a shaded view, double click on it 
and over here we have shaded and hit OK. All right, the next view is let's learn how to do a section view. I'm going to pre-select the view here. This is the view we want. And I'm going to go to section. Now I just moved my pointer over this edge. If you can't get it to infer, click once and usually it will work. But notice I moved to the edge. I didn't click. And I'm inferring to the center. I'm just going to click now while my pointer was outside of the boundary of the actual model. And then move across. And again, a little bit of a distance away from the actual edge of the model because we want our arrows to come out in that direction. So click. Now if you want you can make a zigzag through but in this case we're just going to go straight through. I'm going to right click now and hit continue. What it will do it will, it will actually allow you to unfold a section view and you can see the cut section view right there. Um, on the left you have the ability to select cut edges or different things like that. Um, in this case we're not too concerned about that but there are other options there so just click to drop it in. I'm going to make a little bit more room here. Okay, one thing we could see is that the text is very large. The settings that you'll find for the drawing for dimensions and notes and such you typically could um, find them up here at the top under the manage tab and you'll find the styles editor. The styles editor contains basically all the options for this particular uh, drawing. And here you can see there's you could make any changes you wish to any of these different items for annotations. In this case the A text labels label text we could go in here and we could change the text to a different size like for example 0.1 and you could also change if you wanted you could go ahead and change this as well I'm gonna go ahead and leave it with Tomaha and if you want to italicize it you could do that as well when you're ready you just hit save and close and now you could see the text is changed and that will update on every note like for example in this case if we do another section view or detail view that's what it's gonna appear as Okay, moving on, let's take a look at a detail view. Zoom up to this region. Let's say we want a detail view of this area here. We go back to Place Views and go to Detail. Move your pointer right in this area here and click. Uh, if you click again a second time in there, you could drag out a circle. And click one more time. Now you see a preview, but look at this, you have a cutout shape. You could do, go with a jagged edge or a smooth edge, and there's other options in there as well. I'm just going to go ahead and click over here to drop that, and I'll leave it at the jagged edge. If you wish to actually change the crosshatch pattern, just double click on the actual crosshatch lines. And over here you'll see you could change from a library of different materials, uh, ANSI standards, as well as change the scale. So let's say if I change it to 2 and then hit OK. And that made it wider, enlarged it. But let's go to 0.5. And there, it's a little bit more detailed now. Okay, let's take a look at an auxiliary view. Let's say off of this edge here we want to unfold a view perpendicular to that. We could go to the auxiliary view, click on the edge and drag this over, center it, and click to drop it. So there you have a number of different views. The basics are there. There's additional view types up there, but in this case we're not too worried about that. That's more of an advanced uh, session. But what I'd like to do next is show you how to add dimensions. So to add dimensions in here, go to the Annotations tab. You'll notice there's Notes, there's Dimensions, there's Retrieve Dimensions. Um, what I'm going to do here, just to show you basics, uh, actually up here I'll do this. Um, I'm going to go to the Dimension tool and for example if you want the diameter you could just click and add your diameter. You have the ability to put it in this Inspection Dimension or Precision and Tolerance Basic Bilateral symmetric min-max fit and things like that you could adjust and then um, there's as well as their symbols I'm just gonna hit OK there and I went with a symmetric and I'm gonna go with uh, 0 0.001 okay now so that's the basic dimensioning tools here 
However, the tools there are tools that enable you to bring in all the dimensions that are in the model. You'll notice here though the text for the dimension is rather large. So if you recall, if you go to manage, you could go to the styles editor. And here we could again change the, the, the neck the, the dimension notes and such. So if we go to dimension, actually have the little plus symbol there. Um, you'll see you could adjust these things. And um, actually we'll go to just the general text. Let's see if we could go to the standard here. And again, make it a little bit smaller. I'm not certain if that's the right one. No, it's not. Let's go back there. Okay. So, um... Right now I'm just drawing a little bit of blank. I'm going to move on here. But basically in there you could change the, the dimensions and such. What I'm going to do next is we're going to go ahead and go back to the annotate. And I want to show you how you could add dimensions another method. Actually retrieving them from the model. If you go up here you go to retrieve. You could select a view and then select the dimensions. Now by clicking on select dimensions it brings in all the dimensions that were in that view uh, for the creation of the model and you get to select which ones you'd like to keep so you just click on the ones that you want to keep. They turn color temporarily and let's see we'll keep maybe that's it just a couple. Hit apply and you can hit cancel. Now you can see that there's some dimensions that we have here all right now this 27 would actually be better suited up here so what you could do you could actually move dimensions just by right clicking hold the right mouse button down and go to uh, there's move dimension and actually let me hit escape a couple times here hit escape and go to move dimension and then select the view you'd like to put that dimension in and it will drop in there and you could always adjust the extension lines and things like that uh, and reposition them to your liking. Okay, <clears throat> as far as notes go, like if we want to put our name in here, the text note, you could go ahead and click in here. And I'm going to go ahead and type in exercise 6. And in here you have the ability to change the parameters as well for this note. Um, again, uh, you could go with bold or italicized. All those different settings are in there. All right. There are additional, several different options in here. Center marks, you could go ahead and select center marks and drop them in. As you can see here, you could click on these edges for the center marks. You also have the ability to use ornate dimensions. So with ornate dimensions, put that in the center there. And then we'll just click on every one of these. Continue. And you'll see that it will drop off. You can select horizontal or vertical. And again, any of these views, if you click on them or double click, you have the ability to adjust their orientation. Using that method. And that concludes exercise six.